Dealerships don't want you to know these five car buying tips that will save you thousands on your next car. If you don't know, my name's Tommy, been in the car business most of my adult life, done sales, done finance, now I negotiate car deals. Enough about me, let's talk about car buying tips. Tip number one, and this is probably my best tip, which is use autotempest.com. It's by far the best resource for finding used cars. It searches a variety of sources like autotempest, cars.com, carsoup, eBay, Facebook, Craigslist, whatever you need to find the exact used car you want. It even goes through auction websites like Cars and Bids. It is a great resource and you can really dial down the car. Not only is the interface great, but you can pick how many days the car's been on the market if you want to buy from private or dealer. If I'm looking for a particular used car, this is always the resource I use. It is by far better than anything else. You can obviously set it up for a distance. Now, when we're looking at this good deal, great deal, I have a few videos on that, but ignore that part. Look for the pricing to find the best deal. Now, when shopping for a used car, I still do everything online and the over the phone. Now, when it goes to higher mileage, 100,000 plus mile cars, ideally, you're always going to want to get these cars inspected. When I talk about my tips, I normally recommend buying a newer used car, something 2018, 2019 that's going to have some reliability. Now, obviously, the biggest thing is going to be negotiating. When negotiating, we don't want to have a variety of vehicles. We want a specific vehicle. I want a 2018 to 2020 RAV4, and I'm negotiating on those cars. Before you buy the car, you just have to tell the dealer that I need to have the car inspected and pending test drive before I buy anything. That will alleviate any concerns, and you can still get all the benefits of negotiating online. And yes, I understand there's a world where you could negotiate on a car and then it not pass your inspection. That's totally fine and that's A-OK. -okay. I promise you it's better than negotiating in store and it's going to save you thousands. Third tip is videos are your friends. I ask for videos all of the time. Pictures do not paint a thousand words, videos do. And maybe it's 10,000 words, I don't even know. But when it goes, comes to video, it's very hard to hide damages. So when I ask, when I'm looking at a used car, I ask the salesperson to make a three to five minute video. I challenge them to find any flaws in the car and I make sure they understand that if I find a flaw that they didn't find, I probably won't buy the car. So make it as thorough as possible. I promise you, you'll never see a camera move that slow and they will find every flaw possible because the last thing they want to do is put all this work into something and then the deal back out. So ask for video wherever you can. I promise you it's going to make a world of a difference when finding the quality. And I also another just side bonus that won't be one of my tips, ask if there's any smells to the car. There are smoker cars, there's dog cars. I always ask, hey, I'm a really sensitive to smell. Is there any smell that I should know of in the car? Smoke, dog. And you're normally going to get one of two responses, which is just straight up no. Or they're going to say, well, you know, there was a smell, but the good news is we got rid of it. Uh, you can't even smell it anymore. You can ask if it was a pet car or a smoker car and they're gonna tell you if it is or not. And then that's gonna be your red flag. If they tell you, eh, there was kind of a smell, but we got rid of it, don't buy that car, buy the other one. Third tip, and this is the one that's hardest for people to swallow, which is I don't ever recommend you buy the cheapest car. What I always tell my clients every single time is you wanna find the best possible car at the best possible price. That sometimes means buying a more expensive car. I promise you when you're looking at it five years down the road and you spend an extra two, three thousand dollars on a vehicle, you are not gonna regret it if it was the right vehicle. So I always say when finding the right vehicle, do your research to make sure you're finding the right vehicle. Make sure it has a clean Carfax. Make sure that the maintenance records are good. Make sure that the car is clean and well-maintained. Make sure it has little to no owners, you know, one or two owners versus four to five owners. It's going to make a world of a difference when owning that car long term. Next tip is learn how to read a Carfax. Now, this is one of those things that's so overlooked, but somebody that negotiates and buys cars nationwide, it's so important to learn. We're talking about a Carfax. The average person probably looks to see if it had any accidents, how many owners it had, and if it was maybe bought locally, if you go above and beyond, that's it. For when I do a Carfax, I am looking at so many things. I'm first off seeing if it's an auction car, or if it's a locally traded car. I'm checking where the maintenance was done. Was it done at a dealership or was it done at a third party? If it's a Toyota or a Lexus and it was done at a third party, that's a red flag to me. Why in the world are they not bringing it for the free maintenance at a Toyota dealership and they're bringing it to a third party? Again, that's a red flag that they didn't really care about how the car was maintained. So when it talks about a luxury car, how was the maintenance done? Are we gonna look at one of the small things I notice all the time is how often were the tires changed? Now that seems like something small, but I saw a Carfax the other day that didn't seem like a red flag at all to my client, but they changed their car tires and had them balanced 10 times over the last three years they owned the car. And you might say, Tommy, maybe they put winter tires, maybe they put summer tires on. But the reality is they were changing them in the middle of the summer, in the middle of the fall, and that means they were driving recklessly and probably hitting a lot of curbs. Hitting a lot of curbs could have an impact on your suspension. These are the deep dives that I do. I have some videos on my channel on how to do a Carfax read. So if you guys really want the in-depth there, but learn how to do this, and I promise you, it will save you hours of talking to dealerships. Final tip, and this is probably one of the most important ones, which is know what inspection was done on the car. 
For example, certified pre-owns are the highest level inspection you can get on a used car. It's set from the manufacturer, not by the dealership. So if you're buying a certified pre-owned, you know that that car is the creme of the crop, best used car there is. If you're buying a dealer certified car, so some people call that E-certified, whatever magic thing they have, that's the second highest level. That is a dealership set. Go look at the inspection seat to set up what is done. I always aim for certified pre-owns and then I'm going to dealership inspect it. If it is a wholesale as is car, it is probably not worth your time. And I don't buy almost any car from a like corner lot or anything along those lines are not the best quality cars and they have to get the bottom of the barrel vehicles even to keep their lots full. So don't buy from a side lot car. I don't care how good of the discount it is. It's not worth it. Same as buy here, pay here. If you guys like videos like this, I want you to like, follow, subscribe. Thank you guys so much and have a great day.